Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Lydia of Lydia Naomi Patterns. I also create sewing content here on YouTube and today I'm very excited to walk you through the sew along for my newest pattern, my early spring Nomi by Mimi G shirt dress. I really wanted to create something that was utilitarian for the summer that had the top stitching and was just a great kind of casual piece to wear in the summer at any given time, just throw it on. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Today I'm working with a pink bull denim and an orange linen. I do highly recommend a drapey fabric like linen as opposed to the structure and bulk of the denim. You'll find it will be a little bit easier to sew. Make sure you take a look at the back of the pattern envelope for sizes and notions and read through the instruction booklet provided, especially the glossary of terms if you're unfamiliar with paper patterns. The seam allowance for this pattern is 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters unless otherwise mentioned. To prep, start by adding fusible facing to the wrong sides of each pair of piece 4, 7, 11, 19, 15, and 16. Take your upper and lower pocket pieces, piece 3 and 6. I'm only showing piece 3 because the construction is the same for both. Press under a quarter inch or 6 millimeters on the upper edge of both pockets. Turn the upper edge to the outside along the fold line, forming a facing. Then stitch along the seam line on the raw edges. To ease the curve edge of the pocket, stitch a quarter inch or six millimeters inside the seam line using a long machine stitch. And then trim the seam allowance in the facing area to a quarter inch. Next, you're going to turn the corners right side out turning the facing to the wrong side, and press. You can pull up the ease stitches to shape the curve, and then press under the raw edges along the stitch line. To eliminate bulk, you can notch out the fullness in the seam allowance along the curves. Then stitch the facing close to the inner edge. And these will be the exact same steps for the lower pocket or piece 6. Sometimes if I don't want to backstitch, I manually do it so that it's neater. And I do this by pivoting 180 degrees to sew over the first stitches. It didn't really come out that well this time. I could have just backstitched here, but now you know a little technique to make something clean. And not just on the top side, on the bottom side as well. Next, take your upper front piece, which is piece two, and pin the upper pocket at the drill marks. We're also going to do this for the lower front, or piece five, and the lower pocket, which is piece six. You're going to edge stitch, then top stitch. So what I mean by edge stitch and top stitch is that you're going to sew close to the edge of the pocket first, and then sew about a quarter inch or six millimeters away from that original edge stitch. And I like to do it in one go as shown here. Two of your upper pocket flaps, or piece four, have interfacing on them, so pair them right sides together and sew around the perimeter, leaving the edge with the small dots and the notch open. Do the exact same thing for the lower pocket flaps, or piece seven. Next, trim them and turn them out. Edge stitch and top stitch them as we did with the pockets. 
Next, you can apply them at the notches to their respective upper and lower front panel. Once the flaps are applied, place the upper and lower front right sides together and you're going to stitch together and after you stitch it, make sure that you overlock that seam. Then you're going to sew the edge stitch and top stitch, which will be a theme throughout this tutorial. Next, take your yoke front and sew a stay stitch at the neckline. And the stay stitch is when you sew a half inch from the raw edge. Then with right sides together, sew the upper front to the yoke front. And again, don't forget to overlock the seam before you edge and top stitch it. And this is the result. Moving on to the back. To make pleats in the upper back or piece nine, on the outside, fold along the solid lines. Then bring the folds to the broken lines or the center back. And pin and press in place. Stitch across the raw edges and at the bottom make sure you stitch at 5 eighths of an inch because next we're going to clip the lower edge of the upper back to the stitching at the small dot. Next take your lower back or piece 10 and with right sides together and raw edges even pin the upper edge of the lower back piece 10 to the lower edge of the upper back matching the small dots and notches. Stitch this together. Next you're going to want to overlock this seam before you press it towards the upper back and edge stitch and top stitch to finish. Next, stay stitch the neck edge of the yoke back, piece eight, and with right sides together and raw edges even, pin the upper edge of the upper back to the lower edge of the yoke back, stitch it together and then overlock and press the seam towards the yoke back. And again, we're going to edge stitch and top stitch. Next, and this is very important, make sure that you overlock the shoulder and side seams before the next step. And if you don't have an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch or use bias binding, something to finish the edges and keep them from unraveling when you wash and wear. Stitch the front to the back at the shoulder edges and the side edges from the armhole edge to the large dot. And make sure that you mark those dots because you have to backstitch at the dots to reinforce the seam. So here as I get to the dots, I'm making sure that I know where they are and I'm going to stop right there and backstitch there. This is very important if you want the hem facings applied easily later. After you sew, press the seams open, and in case you're wondering what that little wooden tool is, it's a tailor's clapper, and it allows the seam to cool and set at the same time, making a nice crisp seam. This is the upper collar, piece 11. Make sure that you transfer all the dots, they're very important, and this piece is fused, and the first thing to do is machine stitch 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters from the single notched edge. Clip the notched edge of the collar to the stitching at the small dots, and then you're going to press this under 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters between the clips. Then trim this to a quarter inch or six millimeters and we're going to ease stitch the upper and side edge between the large dots and double notch. And ease stitch just means that you're going to sew two rows of your largest stitch. The first one's going to be 5 eighths of an inch from the raw edge. The next one's going to be a quarter inch from the raw edge. Then I just love to do a preliminary pulling up of the ease stitches. And then with right sides together, you're going to pin the under collar piece 12 to the upper collar. And if you need to, you can adjust the ease stitches to fit. Then stitch this together from large dot to large dot and leave the single notched edge open. 
Then once this is done, you can trim the seam and the corners. Next, understitch the under collar. So fold the seam allowance towards the under collar, which is not interfaced, and stitch close to the seam. You can start and end about two inches from the collar points. Now I am switching to my orange sample briefly to show you the following steps. I have placed the collar right sides together to the neckline and lined up the centers and large dots. The small dot lines up at the shoulder seam and the large dot at the front. You'll notice on the inside I've clipped the seam allowance of just the neckline, not the collar, to the stay stitch that we did earlier. This makes it so much easier to get everything lined up easily. When we sew, sew from the large dot to the large dot and in the back section make sure you move the folded area of the upper collar out of the way. And when you're done, it should look like this. We are now moving on to adding the front facing or piece 13, but let's prep it first. The top shoulder edge should be folded back and sewn at 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters and the curved long edge of the facing needs to be finished by overlocking. At the base of the facing, I have sewn together the lower front and the back facing for the hem from the top edge to the dots. Then I sewed the lower front facing to the inner edge of the front facing at the usual 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters. Also, make sure that you stay stitch along the neckline, as I mentioned earlier. Now with right sides together, pin the facing to the neck and front edges of the dress. I skipped the ease stitches like we did on the collar, but they can be helpful. I just eased it in manually by putting the ease side on the bed of the machine and allowing the feed dogs to help ease it in. So you're going to sew the facing to the dress from the neck to the hem. At this point, I trim down the inner layers and the lapel area. Also snip through all thicknesses where the back neck section ends at the facing. So we will be able to fold that seam allowance section into the collar. Moving on to the hem. Pin the lower front facing to the hem matching the notches. When you sew, treat each section as its own. So you're going to push back the seam allowance and sew right to the dot and back stitch there. Then you'll start a new stitch in the next section with a back stitch. Turn out the collar area. Turn the facing to the inside, turn the back seam toward the collar, and pin in place. 
Then turn it over and you can pin from the outside so that you can top stitch. I did this a little bit different than the instructions, so I started by stitching in the ditch of the shoulder seam to catch the facing, and then I stitched over the back collar seam to catch the fold of the collar on the inside. You can edge and top stitch the front neck and collar now as the instructions say, or you can do it in one fell swoop with the hem as I like to do. Just do yourself a favor and check now that you have plenty of bobbin thread. Now that this is done, we can move on to the hem. So trim the seam allowance of the hem and then turn it out. Make sure the side seams are pressed open and flat and also press around the edges. Measure one and a half inches or 3.8 centimeters from the edges of the hem. Start your stitch from the front edge and follow your hem guideline to the other side. Then you're going to pivot towards the top of the dress and edge stitch until you get all the way to the other side of the hem. Then you're going to pivot again, sew a few stitches across the hem stitch, and then pivot towards the top again, and top stitch about a quarter inch or six millimeters away from the edge stitch. Whatever you choose, just make sure it looks consistent. When you get to the bottom, you're going to stitch to the hem stitch and then you're going to pivot and sew across the hem stitch and back stitch to finish. The sad thing is that I ran out of bobbin thread only a few inches from the end, so make sure you check your bobbin first. This is our second last step, so take piece 14, the sleeve, and contrary to the instructions, I'm going to tell you to first press up the hem an inch and a quarter, or 3.2 centimeters, then fold in the quarter inch. It's so much easier to do this while it's flat, so just getting that crease in there is really good. Next, you're going to ease stitch the top of the sleeve between the small dots, and as usual, I like to pull them up a little bit too, then sew the underarm seams together and just make sure that you overlock each side of that sleeve first, then sew them together. Right sides together, of course. Finger press open the underarm seam, fold up the hem, pin it in place, and then just stitch close to the edge of the fold to finish. Turn your sleeve right side out and hold the dress wrong side out with the armhole towards you. Now with right sides together, pin the sleeve to the armhole edge, matching the underarm seams first, then the notches and the two small dots, and make sure that you put the center small dot at the shoulder seam. And you can pull up the E-stitches to fit. To distribute this fullness evenly, slide the fabric along the bobbin threads until there are no puckers or tucks. As you can see here, I don't have any puckers and tucks along the seam line. So the instructions say to baste, then stitch, then stitch again an eighth of an inch away, but I just stitched it all together, making sure that the ease side was on the machine bed so that the feed dogs help ease it in. After this, I removed the ease stitches, and there were a few tiny puckers that weren't actually sewn in as pleats, so I was able to kind of wiggle them free and make them just a smooth cap to the sleeve. Trim the seam below the notches. I trimmed it to about a quarter inch so that I could then overlock that entire seam allowance, 
and this is how it should look. Lastly, we will add the button and buttonholes. I've punched out the ends of the buttonholes on the marker. So you're going to place the marker on the left side. That's left when you're looking at it. Mark the buttonholes with a disappearing pen or a chalk or something. And you may want to lower the placement of the buttonhole that's near that waist seam so that the seam doesn't create a problem when you're stitching that buttonhole. Sew your buttonholes for your 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeter wide buttons, and then you want to open your buttonholes. Next, I like to measure the placement of the center front line from the edge on that guide. It should be 3 quarters of an inch, and then you double that. So that's going to be an inch and a half and you're going to mark that from the edge on the other side of the dress and this is where you line up the buttonhole side overlapping it. Then you can mark the button placement through the buttonholes and then once you're done that just double check. These buttonhole placements should be three quarters of an inch from the edge. That's the center front. Then just sew on your buttons. We're back to the pink sample. And that's it, we're done. I'm so excited to see what you guys make. Share it with me in the wider community by tagging me at Lydia Naomi Studio. Tag at simplicity underscore creative underscore group. And also use the hashtag ME2068.